Hello. To make the most of today's Cyclopean mystery, I've asked for help with the presentation. We are here at Hilly Archaeological Park, a small park an hour away from Dubai, which we, where we can see three different sets of ruins. Here, there's a residential area, mostly built of rocks and mud mortar. Directly behind me, you can see the large tomb, the true highlight of this park. It's constructed of large curved slabs tightly fitted together. Bass relief depicts of two men, one which is being carried by a donkey and the other carrying some firewood. Look at how close to the edge it is, like as if it was broken. Underneath that, there are some other animals, most likely monkeys. This site was used as a grave for many people. It was excavated and restored in the 1970s, but it was found to be dated back to the 26th century BC, about the same time the pyramids were being built. Let's take a better look around. Do you believe what you see? Now that we've visited the site, let's try and explaining it. We often notice how modern architecture has all become quite similar. Not only in Dubai, but around the world, with a particular style of buildings and designs reflecting a globalized culture. Just the same could be said about polygonal masonry. We did multiple examples of similar constructions scattered around the world, including not Dubai, but close. The Grand Tomb of Yuli is one of the many circular tombs the Um Anar culture left around the UAE and Oman from about the same time as when the pyramids in Egypt were built. All the other buildings from this culture are mud mortar and small stones, what we would expect from a primitive desert community. One that had just settled down, domesticated the palm tree and started with minimal agriculture. Life in the desert was harsh, and there was not a lot of spare manpower to go around wasting in fancy constructions. So, how did they build this grand tomb? How did they get to invent polygonal masonry, way before most other civilizations? Here's a couple of hypotheses to entertain. The simpler one is that the reconstruction was a work of fiction. I could find one single line in one paper admitting the usage of new stones on the tomb. And it figures, as the, all the other buildings around are run down to the ground. The doubt here is how far out was the intervention. Did it complement the original with all but equivalent substitutions of the missing parts? Or was the polygonal fitting of large slabs of stone a modern fabrication? Let's say the large slabs of stones of the Grand Tomb were originally freestanding, not fitted, and the Danish Iraqi archaeologists were in for a cheap scam and faked the whole thing, slicing stones and fitting them polygonally. It could have happened, fake reconstructions like that have happened in the past. But not so much in the 1970s, when this work was done. By then, the era of the grave robbers slash archaeologists was mostly over, one hopes. The 
The second possibility is that the dating of the other Cyclopean walls all around the Mediterranean is incorrect. Maybe those are older, thus the idea had time to reach the desert. One thing is certain, unlike many other polygonal masonry where the dating is disputed, these in Hilly are tombs and the bodies inside offer a proper date for the building. 26th century BC making Hilly the second or third oldest confirmed usage of polygonal masonry all around the world. I could not find reference in studies for contact between the Umm Annar culture and the Old Kingdom of Egypt. But, to be fair, the studies that I could find simply ignored this construction, like it was transparent. Maybe those authors missed the Egyptian influence too. Another often mislooked challenge is the finesse of polygonal masonry, defeating the idea of a bunch of primitive tribesmen slaving away under a master plan. These nice works are built by master stonemasons. And, up until modern times, only a handful of people in the village could become an expert in anything else that wasn't producing food. Like, Two or three out of every 100 villagers or so are there even if they were living in the desert. Considering that of all the other buildings left by the Umm al Nar culture, none is remotely similar in technique, how did the desert people that were just building with small stones and mud mortar suddenly came up with this fine work? Let's try using nearby Dubai for a comparison. 30 years ago, Dubai was, let's say, underwhelming. Then, in a short period of time, it becomes this futuristic tourist attraction, packed with modern towers, bush, how they are called locally. Naturally, for the transformation to happen, the inhabitants of Dubai had help. Experts from around the world settled in and left their mark. In many other small things, not just one building. But in Hilly, the Grand Tomb popped up out of nowhere. Not quite in a Burj Khalifa size, but at least like the Burj Al Arab. Together with nothing else. No international experts, no decades of building up around it, no larger impact in the culture. Just a single futuristic building out of time and place. Here we have it. Unless some other polygonal masonry ruins we found around the Mediterranean Sea are in fact older than the official dating, and also that the early Bronze Age or the Neolithic were a vibrant global time with extensive contacts amongst distant people. Or we will have this grand tomb of Ili, with its refined polygonal masonry just standing alone, out of time and place. With all this, I hope to help a tiny number of Dubai's visitors into appreciating this 5,000-year-old Burj. Next time, we will visit another single standing out of place polygonal mystery. One we can find in the remote and isolated Easter Island. Please keep an eye on the channel.